Hello, this is Sol with your horrific vision for the week. Today we're in Stormwind, and the footage that you're going to see here is my first full 5 chest clear in this area. By popular demand, let me tell you my character setup real quick. I'm rocking an item level of 450 with a neck level of 76. My cloak level is at 8, and I have one piece of corruption gear that gives me echoing void, so you'll see me spawn and I have corruption every now and then. As a tank, I took up buffs for my health. So I'm using Ghastly Goulash as my food buff, and I'm using, you know, the usual raid buffs too. I also opted to use a Stamina Flask this time to up my Echoing Void damage. My talent choices opted for Defense and Snaring, and for my Azerite traits, I went with Crucible as my Major, and then Anima for the HP, Null Dynamo for the Magic Resist, and Strength of the Warden for a little bit more healing, I guess, and Corruption Resistance. I'm fighting a cough, so... I'm sorry if I don't sound right, and I'm especially sorry that some of the in-game footage is being cut off. Also keep in mind that a recent hotfix nerfed mob HP across the board if you happen to be queuing up as a solo tank or a healer, which made this particular run much easier than it would have been. So anyway, let's get started. So I opted to just kind of get started the usual way that I do with an invisibility pot. Like these first two packs right here, they're totally skippable. I'm not going to run through this area again after this. I really start by pulling the Rift Walkers over here because I'm going to be pulling them later. And then I grab the pack to the right and then I move on to the left because I'm going to be going over to the Dwarven District. I light up the Void Speaker first with who I'm targeting here because I don't want to get feared. Uh, but maybe because I'm sick, uh, I, I, I just started this off really, really messy. Like, this is something that only a tank would really be able to survive, getting double stunned and otherwise just getting hit by a lot of stuff. So having Ghastly Goulash as my food buff is extremely helpful. And of course, Echoing Void just does massive, massive damage, even if I happen to be stunned. So I'm still able to make short work of these, even though I'm making a ton of mistakes. I'm not interrupting the Rift Walkers using Shadow Shift, like you can see the bubbles that they have on right now. And they're absorbing like a lot of damage. And this honestly is just really bad. I'm just taking up a lot of time. So be sure to try to stun these guys or interrupt them whenever they're trying to do that cast and you'll be OK. I got a bit OK, though. It wasn't the, that big of a deal. You can run over these uh, corruption puddle things. They don't put you, um, they don't keep you locked in combat. Uh, but I do pull these gnomes. They do need to be taken out before you can proceed with the objectives in the Dwarven district. And it doesn't, uh, you know, these guys are of no importance at all. You can actually click on this door thing bef shortly before you engage them if you happen to just kind of be mounted and you run all the way through. Uh, this week happens to be Scorched Feet, where you're, where, you know, you can see right there. I jump like a crazy person every now and then. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to be pulling, I'm going to be doing a pretty big pull. Um, I don't know if I said, but I also happen to be rocking the Elite Extermination buff. Uh, the, the Titanic Research, that, which is a huge, huge help, because once I kill this guy, you'll see it shortly. Um, I get 200 Sanity back, which is uh, absolutely integral uh, for being able to do this without using any uh, crazy tricks or whatnot. Yeah, so there's the uh, sanity return. Easy stuff. And from there, it's um, it, it, it's not so bad. Uh, being able to get the sanity back on top of everything else makes this run not as uh, hectic as I thought that it would be. At least, that's what I thought to myself at the start. I imagine that this uh, this buff or this debuff, Scorched Feet, is a lot more uh, troublesome for casters as opposed to melee. But at any rate, uh, most of these mobs that are not very consequential, they do have some ranged attacks, so I try to line of sight them to get them all bunched up together as best as I can. But since I'm not taking all that much damage anyway, uh, there's not too much to worry about except for stuff on the ground. So the piercing shots, not really a big deal. Most everything, to be honest, is is not a big deal at this point. Like, you can barely see my HP going down unless I'm pulling, like, an absolute truckload of mobs. If anything, going through this zone, uh, part of the trouble is just making sure that you're clicking on these bombs and making sure that you uh, get everything in time. Otherwise, of course, that's going to be a lot of wasted time. So I think I goofed up. I'm sorry, again, I apologize that uh, the minimap's not available. I'm sure that's a little bit frustrating. But I got them all. From here, click on this detonator. 
to get the mini boss to pop up. Just like before, I mean, we I think we did uh, Stormwind uh, the other week with Scorched Feet, so uh, handling him is going to be just the same as it was before. Just pop cooldowns, light him up, and when those circles appear, run out of the way. With a certain debuff, you just want to make sure that you not move until you really need to. Bit, small movements don't really do much, but once you make a bigger movement, that's when the jump happens. So you want to try to, you know, try to jump over the fire if uh, if that's possible. But with this guy down, I just proceed through the gate behind him, and this will take me to the new area. This tentacle here, you do want to take out. This one will keep you locked in combat if you try to just run away from it. The tumors, not a big deal. Just make sure you take this guy out, and then just proceed. Ta-da! So this was my first time encountering this new madness, uh, which is called Leaden Foot. I had to read it up top there. Uh, and this is extremely frustrating. You're not going to see it yet, but first let's take care of this elite. Uh, this elite does Blade Flourish, which you can't interrupt. You can't stun this one, so just get out of it. She also does a Roaring Blast, which you just want to stand out of the way of. Sorry, Valera, you kind of ate the damage. Not a big deal, though. Just take her out, get some sanity back, and proceed. So out of combat, Leaden Foot doesn't affect you, as you can see right there. But once you are in combat, you'll quickly, very quickly get slowed down to a crawl. And this is an absolute nightmare uh, for melee or tanks. Ta casters, I'm sure that you're going to have problems too. Mages can blink and you know they have some, uh, some opportunities to get out of stuff. Uh, but this can easily cause a lot of trouble for you. Uh, make sure that you interrupt the SI7 informant. They're the ones that cast the Touch of the Abyss, which I did not do. So <laughs> try to make sure that you focus those guys down. So I opted to try and pull that, that second main guy because I wanted to get some sanity back. But of course, it was hard to move. <laughs> Thankfully, my Crucible has a lot of range, so I'm able to pull him over. But I pop cooldowns, try to blow this guy up uh, quickly. But there's, there's just so much going on. Uh, between the touch of abyss, between the ads coming out, uh, and my low sanity, that I decided to well use whatever my class has available to me and bubble. So I just bubble through all of that, you know, through whatever damage that I could have taken or sanity damage. I got some sanity back, thankfully, but I'm still running a little bit low. So I think at this point I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit anxious. I feel bad because I don't quite know exactly what that boss does. I'll get into that in my more robust uh, lost guide, but <laughs> that's going to be a little for a little bit later. So I'm running pretty darn low on sanity and I get a little frustrated here because we're supposed to click, Valera and I are supposed to click each of those orbs uh, in order to open the door. So you can see her like run off right there. So I guess she's running off over to the other orb and we both need to click on them at the same time. Of course, if you have a person with you, you need to time it with that person to click it. But I was having trouble trying to figure that out. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Uh, but once, uh, once, yeah, I'm able to finally figure it out and engage Shaw out here. So Shaw spawns these eyeballs that you just don't want to look at, which can be very frustrating because you want to have, because of course you need to look at him in order to cast spells or to melee him or whatever. So you just want to try to make the most of those few moments when he is in front of you, when he doesn't disappear and start spawning uh, dark, squirrely, dark uh, swirlies on the ground. So it's going to be a little bit troublesome, depending on your class. Yeah, just, just try your best to make sure you stand out of stuff. I mean, more than anything, just try to make sure that you're not looking at the eyes. That's going to cause the most trouble for you. More so than the damage that you take. And from there, we can take the portal back. So now that we're back at the cathedral, we're going to head to the next area. And in this case, there is no tentacle. We can just keep right on going. There's a rare over there that I'm not going to bother with. Because, hey, just trying to stay focused here, you know? Hot fields are going to spawn, so I'm going to take the time to hit this treasure chest. I don't really bother with treasure chest runs here. Because I just want to make sure that I'm completing my objectives and get this first one, this first run done. The tentacle, of course, has to go. All the time, every time. You never, ever want to lose it. And from there, I go straight for the caster. 
This caster can't be stunned, but he has spells that you do want to interrupt, the Agonizing Torment. Just make sure that you interrupt it just before it goes off, or during the channel. As a paladin, of course, I have my Avenger Shield. I'm a super hacker like that. Otherwise, you can make pretty quick work of him. And otherwise, what these guys do isn't super uh, hard to avoid, so I can, I can either take these guys out or just move on to the next pack. I get the pack both to the right and to the left over here, including the tentacles. I just kind of kite them over, sort of. You can see the brown swirly where the tentacles are about to pop up. The mental assault that those tormentors do, they can cause some pretty serious damage uh, for people who aren't tanks, so just try to watch out for that or try to either their line of sight or interrupt it if you can. The tentacles are going to be the most frustrating thing though. Once they're taken out though, just go ahead and go for this guy. All you really want to do is stay out of the swirlies and whenever he casts chains, just run away from it. He casts the chains uh, based on percentages, so he'll cast it uh, two, or, two or three times I believe. And I think I hit him pretty hard, so I think he's going to cast it uh, very quickly. Yeah, so here he is. He's casting it again. After that, though, just as before, just like in our previous runs, just go ahead and take care of these uh, cages and open them up. The bit of the pain that you have to deal with, of course, is making sure that you efficiently do this. You don't want to get lost. You don't want to make a wrong turn or otherwise just uh, forget about one. Which I happen to do in this run, actually. You can see that one behind, uh, behind there. I should have went for it, and I didn't. I opted to go in a totally different direction instead. And I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of pay the price for that later, but uh, it, it's all gonna work out. There are just little, there's just a lot of little things that you want to do to try to preserve your sanity as best as you can, and going down the right path is going to be especially important, especially for the lost areas and the lead in foot madness. It's going to cause a lot of problems in just a few minutes once we get in there. Here comes a tentacle. The enemy of the enemy of all, the true enemy of all. But otherwise, uh, the end of this area isn't very, uh, it's not very eventful. Just click through and clear out whatever mobs that you missed, and that's it. Of course, I missed one. <laughs> to go all the way around, which I really didn't have to. Using up precious little bits of sanity just to get here. But that's okay. So instead of taking the portal, I'm going to be opening my map a lot, and otherwise navigating my way uh, to the mage quarter. And here we are, getting in. Take out the tentacle. So here I kind of go in blind. I, I, I totally forgot what was in here uh, from my PTR testing. All I can see is that I have leaden foot and there's very little that I can just kind of run through because these tumors will uh, at least temporarily put me in combat and slow me down and that's just going to like mess with everything so you're going to end up having to kill almost everything here um, it's going to be very difficult to even like stealth your way through because you'll hop onto these tumors you'll take damage and at least I have a feeling that that's going to put you in combat so I opt to use my uh, I, I have to use another orb here which I believe is my second orb, and go for this tentacle here. And from here it's kind of an adventure, I'm kind of going in blind, not exactly knowing uh, what's around the corner, but I do know that there are a bunch of portals that I need to close which involve defeating these portal masters like this one that I'm about to grab. There it is. Meanwhile, that corruptor guy, that elite, is is super painful, especially with leather foots. You can see like he keeps spawning swirlies, and when you can't move, that's going to cause like huge, huge sanity damage. So I bubble out of this. Or you can use freedom, or you can use you know whatever immunity you have to at least temporarily take the debuff off. But you're still taking a lot of sanity damage for uh, off of this one. Thankfully, the elite extermination will cancel out at least some of the sanity that I lost. But this still turned out to be really messy. Uh, in later runs, I just kind of bubble and just burn them as, as hard as I can, just focus on that and you know not care about anything else. 
Um, but you can see here, I'm kind of combat locked. There's a mob chasing me, and I don't know why, I just ignored it right now. But here I am trying to run away from nothing, but I can't. And, and there it is. So, so now you know, like, if you're not in combat, you don't get afflicted by that debuff, but when you're in combat, you are. So you definitely want to make sure that you kill everything that you're fighting, with the exception of two. So you're okay there, uh, but you probably just want to take them out anyway, because you might be doing some backtracking. I'm sure that there is an ideal path to take, um, and I think that without Leadenfoot, this area would be a lot more forgiving otherwise. So this other elite isn't nearly as painful as that tentacle blob guy. He just has a Shadow Bolt and a Rain of Fire. He spawns adds as well, uh, but they're not that big of a deal. You can just kind of ignore them while you take care of the elite and take, the, uh, and, uh, take out the adds later. So I have three out of the five Void Portals closed, and there's another little blob dude. For some reason, they seem to just kind of spawn randomly and put you in combat, which can be incredibly frustrating. They kind of surprise me a number of times. Yeah, see right there, that tentacle that, that uh, was kind of hiding there. Definitely kill everything that you see. I have a feeling that people are going to like this a lot less than um, like the Hotfoot one. <laughs> like that's nothing compared to this. Not being able to move uh, like this, like the way you want, uh, well, you'll see. You'll see. Just like before, those voice speakers, they, caught, they cast a fear. Just make sure that you interrupt it. I did not. Alright, so I gotta make my way down here. Try not to get lost, although I am kind of lost. But here we go. One more, I think. When you get to the stage of being able to get to, uh, you know, make attempts at five chesting, you'll find that your character is quite a bit stronger than before, you know, you'll have a lot of the necessary things that you need. Uh, from there, it's just the affixes that really uh, make a difference. So like Lead and Foot, uh, it, it does waste a lot of time. Uh, so I opt to use my last orb here, which is unfortunate. I, I really wanted to save my last orb for like, for Illyria. So now time's ticking. Thankfully I'm out of combat, but in order to get to the boss, Umbric, I have to go up into uh up into the sanctum here and into the portal room and there he is right there so this guy has a number of spells that you want to interrupt he has a polymorph that you'll see he also has arcane missiles that you also want to interrupt uh, but the really bad one is this one right here this frozen storm where he just teleports to one side of the room and casts these you know cast those little ice thingamajiggers and if you hit them he takes some sanity damage. The really big pain in the ass, though, is this Leaden Foot debuff. So as you can see, I'm kind of stuck. And you gotta get all the way across. So you're gonna take a lot of sanity damage if you don't have any recourse for this kind of debuff. So right now I have nothing. I, I used my freedom, I used all my stuff, I have nothing available, I'm just kind of stuck. And he's also behind a kind of, sm a kind of smoke cloud or smoke bomb so you have to go into melee range to hit him and otherwise stop the cast so there we go i finally got through a lot of fun <laughs> and here he goes he does it again so he'll do this three times it's all based on percentages uh so in this case i have my blessing of freedom available and i'm able to kind of sneak through and pretty much take him out there we go finally so this Leaden Foot, I would say, is probably my least favorite out of all the madness it fixes so far. And by least favorite, I mean I mean I hate it. But you want to quickly take the portal back so you can take a little bit less sanity damage in this tainted area. And off we go to Alaria. I have a little bit over half of my sanity bar left, which is pretty good. I think that's where you want to be at here. Ideally, you want to have a whole bunch of cooldowns ready, pots and uh, drums and everything for you. 
And of course, she does have more HP. She does take on all the abilities of the previous bosses that you took out, including that Eye of Chaos over there. So that's going to affect how you conduct this fight. Beware. The madness here is Promise Power, which really, well, which is like the poop one. Because that means I'm doing 10% less damage for pretty much this entire fight. Beware. There's not a lot of opportunities for me to stand in that thing. So you can see that she has the, the Chains of Servitude. I need to get away from that, otherwise I take huge sanity damage. But she also has her normal cast watch I need to stay away from, and I need to stay away from the eye, or I need to face away from it. Otherwise, I'll take some extra damage. On top of my own, uh, on top of my own corruption effects. And then there's that polymorph. <laughs> that, unfortunately, you can't line of sight. Uh, she's gonna hit you with that unless you interrupt it. Which again can be uh, kind of a pain. So it's a pattern of using all sorts of different abilities that force you to move and force you to reposition. Staying away from the eye, getting away from the fire, getting away from the black swirlies, lightning of sighting, or getting away from chains, interrupting the polymorph, and so on and so forth. So good luck on sitting on promised power. At any rate though, you still have, uh, you know, I'm still doing some pretty decent damage. My sanity is still at a little above 25%. And I could have used my Divine Shield here to avoid a lot of the damage and otherwise stay focused on the boss for a little bit if things were really hitting the fan. But it looks like that wasn't the case. And we got it. And I look relieved. <laughs> so that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this, this talk through. I'm going to leave this thing running a bit so you guys can see the loot that I get. And otherwise, I'll see you for the next part of the guide. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Yeah, yeah bitch. All right, let's see what I get. Chest number one. Torn page, three thingies, Mentos. More of the stuff. Fear and flesh, Mentos. Next one. That stuff in Mentos, cool. More stuff in Mentos, also cool. All right. And now for the big daddy. What do I get? Malignant Leviathan's War Boots. <gasps> tentacles! <gasps> Yay! Tentacles! Not, not, not great tentacles, but I'll take tentacles. Yeah.